hello. Let me make sure I got my mic live here. Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. This is hosted over the Overlook Mountain Amateur Radio Club repeater and streamed to you live here on YouTube via the Pharmacy Seas Network YouTube channel. Uh, it's 9 p.m., so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started right away. This is KD2 IIN Net Control for the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. The Sunday Night All Things Natural Net is an amateur radio net provided to the amateur radio community here on the Overlook Mountain Amateur Radio Repeater, the 146.805 MHz repeater with a negative shift of 600 kHz and a PL tone of 103.5. Uh, we are here regarding farming, uh, gardening, and ecology, and a broader scope of topics are often involved. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. This is KD2 IIN Net Control looking for check-ins for the Sunday night, all things natural night. <coughs> this is KD2 RFI. KD2 RFI, Bob. Hey, Geeky. Good to see you. Right, so far the net recognizes KD2 RFI. Bob, are there any further check-ins at this time? All right, no further check-ins recognized at this time. Uh, how are you tonight, Bob? Hey, good to see you, Bob. Hey, hypnosis hey, and magic. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a nice day for being outside. Uh, I got a little bit of time out there this afternoon, and I uh, got the uh, water reservoirs and thermal mass tanks refilled in the greenhouse, and uh, made some upgrades on the Raspberry Pi system, and uh, did a bunch of video editing and all kinds of stuff. So it's uh, been a busy day for me. Uh, how are things going up there? <coughs> hey, Kirsten. Uh, very good. is KD2 IIN Net Control with the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. Um, glad to hear it, Bob. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, so you finally got those wrapped, huh? I was uh, looking at my hives again today and debating whether I should even bother at this point in the season, although I see we have a cold snap coming, so maybe I should put that on the punch list for tomorrow and, and get it knocked out and try and help them at least for the last part of the uh, cold season here, although it hasn't been all that cold this year. Uh, let's just take a pause here and see if there's any further check-ins before we continue. This is KD2 IIN Net Control. Looking for any further check-ins for the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. Please call now. KD2 PJT. Uh, this is Andy. Over. Awesome. I think I've heard him before. All right, the net recognizes KD2 BJT. Andy, welcome to the net. I uh, don't believe I've spoken with you before. How are you this evening? I'm <coughs> uh, doing great. Um, yeah, thanks for the thanks for the recognition. Yeah, this is, uh, I'm visiting this area from New York City. Uh, this is actually uh, my first time uh, being uh, checking in awesome. any net control. I'm a new hand. As you can awesome. probably tell, uh, I just got my license uh, last week. Awesome. Um, so yeah. Uh, visiting the area uh, uh, and see what, what, what repeater is out there and, uh, and actually stumble upon Dave, who I think is the owner of the repeater, and he uh, told me about the, uh, the local uh, net. So I thought uh, I was just uh, going to come and say hi to, 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 to folks here. Over. 
Uh, very good. Well, I'm glad you joined us, Andy. And this is the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. This is an amateur year net uh, based around farming, gardening, and uh, all sorts of stuff, although, uh, uh, and ecology as well. Uh, but the scope of our topic often goes much broader than that. Uh, congratulations on getting your amateur radio license. Welcome to the area. Welcome to our uh, repeater here. Um, yeah, Dave, uh, K2JLV, I assume you're referring to, uh, is our uh, club president. And this repeater uh, that is owned by the Overlook Mountain Amateur Radio Club. And it's in a very high position, covers quite a wide area. So uh, you stumbled on a great repeater. Lots of good people in our community here, and they're always uh, encouraging and fun and friendly and helpful. So uh, I'm glad you joined us. Uh, let's just take a pause here and see if there's any further check ins, and then we'll roll back up to Bob. This is KD2 IIN Net Control, looking for any further check ins for the Sunday night, all things natural net. No further check-ins. We'll roll back up to Bob, KD2 RFI. Uh, KD2 RFI. Uh, but before I uh, get to, you know, just uh, spooling out the mouth here a little bit, CJ, how's, how's hey, that Alan. signal? I'm just running on low power here, probably good to see you. Uh, five watts. I'm guessing it should be pretty good, but I'm just curious to hear how you're receiving me. Oh, you're full DFQ in the machine. Nice, clean signal. Nice, loud, punchy audio. You sound great. <coughs> All right, received. I appreciate it. Yeah, some repeaters I, I don't get into too well, and uh, they're, they're not nearly as far as white, but I'm kind of in a little bit of a valley, a little bit of a hole. Uh, once the trees come off, or excuse me, once the leaves come off the trees, I tend to do a little bit better. But with this repeater, I'm pretty sure if it's where I think it is, uh, yeah, I'm pretty much lying line of sight with it, so it's, um, yeah, I should have no problem, but I just wanted to make sure. But no, uh, everything's good here. We did a ton of firewood. Um, I gotta say, I've been having a really good year with firewood. Uh, every time I empty a rack, I have uh, some homemade racks. I used, uh, I think, eight of them for my winter firewood. Every time I empty one this year, I'm able to fill it right back up. I've never been able to do that before, so... totally relate to that and uh, yeah so far this year uh, I've had pretty good luck with firewood as well when I've needed to get out and get it there hasn't been snow or too muddy conditions to go after it and uh, my friend John uh, just gave me a truckload of firewood this week uh, which is already split stuff stuff that was a little bit too big for his stove it's pretty well seasoned and nice um, so uh, I sort of been uh, picking from that a little bit and cheating a bit with that but uh, yeah, it's been a good season so far for it. I, I did blow out the uh, the spool on the clutch on my saw uh, a couple of weeks ago now, and I haven't gotten back to actually taking a clutch off and uh, replacing it. But I do have uh, the new part in place. I just haven't taken the time to get uh, into the greenhouse and uh, disassemble it and put the new uh, new spool on it. Um, but yeah, it's been a great season, and uh, you know uh, this weather certainly is nice to uh, to get a break from the cold and. Uh, and not have snow on the ground and get a chance to get out and move around and uh, get things done so I'm taking advantage of it too and uh, I'm lining up this week for a, a pretty solid week of uh, just doing some cleaning and organizing and um, get some firewood together do whatever repairs I need to do and also try to move forward on uh, some electronic and Raspberry Pi and uh, DMR uh, related stuff as well so uh, yeah it's been a good productive uh, season so far Anyway, I'm kind of babbling a bit, so I guess we're going to roll on down to KD2 BJT Andy. <laughs> I'll bet you do, Owen. KD2 BJT? Yeah, uh, sounds a lot of fun here. Um, actually, I, I've been living in the city for so long, so I uh, really enjoy this, you know, fresh nice, conversation Owen. going on here. Uh, you know, uh, nice. uh, I guess uh, jumping in between uh, 
uh, firewood and raspberry pie is definitely uh, a hell of a lot of fun life, you know, going on here. Uh, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'll be in this area for the weekend. Uh, today um, it's been uh, it's been a great day for uh, for hiking. I went up to Catterskill nice. um, and, uh, and and to, 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 to check out the uh, the waterfall. It's all frozen up, uh, frozen out um, there, so you can actually uh, get very close up to the to the waterfall. Uh, it was, I was <coughs> here during during uh, back back in the fall. Um, and it was a, it's a very different uh, scenery here. So, uh, you know, as I can uh, tell my friend, uh, you can literally come here every season and never get tired of it. So, yeah, uh, pre pretty nice weather. Um, wasn't too windy up there. Um, so, um, had a lot of fun here uh, poking around with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, with, with a scenery and, uh, and a repeater. <laughs> so, nice, huh? Uh, all right, very good. Well, glad you got to do some hiking here. And Catterskill is beautiful any time of year, uh, but it's particularly uh, spectacular when it's frozen in the winter. So I'm glad you got to see it in its frozen state. And uh, that hike isn't too bad. And uh, boy, just some beautiful scenery. And even just the ride up there is nice. So I'm glad you're getting to enjoy all of that. And I'm glad you appreciate the uh, the uh, juxtaposition here of conversation. We uh, we go all over the place on this net. Anything from raspberry pi to plant health to greenhouses to uh, digital technologies to uh, just on down the list it's pretty much literally endless and uh, most of our other nets also end up discussing many of those topics as well uh, the Thursday night net that runs at 8 p.m. on Thursday nights is run by uh, Dave K2JLV who sounds like you've met and spoken with already and uh, that net is all very technically oriented and technically proficient people and so Raspberry Pi and DMR radio and all kinds of cool topics come up there and people really get into uh, some real depth on some of those conversations. Um, before we roll on down, I do another opportunity for check-ins. I'm curious, do you have a Raspberry Pi or have you played with any of that technology yet? <laughs> hey, YT, welcome. KD2BJT. Yeah, um, I actually do have a Raspberry Pi at home. Uh, it's, uh, it's actually owned by my roommate. Um, he uses it to uh, actually automatically record his uh, <laughs> keyboard. Um, like he, he has a he has an electronic uh, piano, and it's hooked up to his uh, uh, keyboard so that um, and it's actually always on low power, so uh, doesn't bother to, to turn it on and off every time. So you just leave it all always on. So when he practices, when he has inspirations and stuff, uh, it will go straight into Raspberry, uh, create a new file, and uh, you know, I think it's all, it's also automatically uploaded to the uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, the NFS uh, disk um, uh, that's hooked up to, to our uh, local local uh, network. network. Cache storage. Um, yeah. Besides that, I also use it to yeah um, to actually hack it to uh, turn it into a Google Assistant. Uh, oh. that is, you know, bother to buy a, 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 a Google uh, a, 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 what do you call it? Like a Google awesome. Dot, like a Google Google Home speaker. So um, I download it a little. Um, SDK onto it and turn it uh, with a speaker and a mic. You just turn it into a Google Home Mini. Very handy. Um, so awesome. yeah, looking for more. Uh, um, I guess more fun stuff with with Raspberry Pi. Um, you know, it's uh, definitely um, uh, a lot more than than than, than that to, to play around with. So um, <laughs> looking for looking for any fun ideas uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, how how you can. Let's say, like, turn it into a um, uh, uh, an SDR um, monitor or something. Uh, still uh, haven't explored that option yet, but I'm definitely interested. Over. All right, this is KD2 IIN, Net Control of the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. We'll take check-ins momentarily here. But uh, Andy, that's awesome. Sounds like you've uh, got some good experience with it. And yeah, what a flexible, awesome piece of hardware. Uh, my Raspberry Pi uh, passion, I guess you would say, started from uh, I have a greenhouse here on a small homestead farm and I wanted a way to control and monitor temperatures and stuff. So uh, mine has multiple thermal sensors attached to it and uh, you know a relay output set up that controls venting and uh, thermal mass uh, circulation and uh, 
the greenhouse is heated with wood, but I uh, manage and uh, kind of regulate temperatures in the greenhouse through the use of uh, the wood stove and a water thermal mass hydronic system and also a, you know, a venting system that opens and closes vents. Uh, recently I've added a DMR radio to it um, because I have a weather station now, an accurate weather station, and my goal is to capture those data packets and import those into the database as well so I have a full weather profile in my data log. Uh, but I chart uh, everything that's going on in the greenhouse and I can look here at my secondary monitor and look at the heads, heads up display anytime. Uh, mine is solar powered and uh, yeah, it's only, it only draws about 12 watts continuous so I leave it on all the time as well. Um, so you're going to fit right in here with, uh, with that sort of interest. Uh, I hope, uh, hope you're around our area a lot more and I hope you get to join Mar of Arnett. So I'm really excited to, uh, to have a, a new participant in this uh, fun uh, discussion and topic. Uh, with that, let's just take a pause here and see if there's any further check-ins. This is Katie 2 iin Net Control for the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. If there's any further check-ins, please call now. <laughs> <laughs> we brought him out of the woodwork. <laughs> All right, the net recognizes K2BHM Jim. I knew we'd bring you out of the woodwork if we started talking about Raspberry Pi. How are you? Good, just relaxing after a nice dinner and uh, reading the mail. And uh, uh, just uh, sitting back relaxing. Very good, very good. Well, glad to have you along. Uh, we'll just do another pause here in case anyone else wanted to jump in. Uh, so any further check-ins, please call now. <coughs> All right, no further check-ins recommended this time. We'll roll back to the top of the list at KD2 RFI. <coughs> K2 
KD2IIN, net control of the Sunday Night of All Things Natural Net. Um, sounds like you're making out all right there, Bob. Uh, I assume you probably know this, but I should mention it just in case you don't. And, of course, anyone else listening on the net might, might be interested in this. Uh, chickens, uh, when they're light, uh, the amount of light that they're exposed to, uh, they're photoperiod sensitive. So when they go below 14 hours, that triggers that reduction in laying and molting and all that stuff. Um, so I would say uh, if you have some patience, uh, when you come back out into a higher light level, uh, they should start laying again. Mine haven't been laying for uh, several months now. They had a little bit of stress in the fall when they moved back into the normal chicken coop and all, all that kind of stuff. So uh, they stopped, they tailed off laying a little earlier than usual. Um, and they haven't laid anything over the winter. So I've kind of been laying out feed and not getting any, uh, any protein or eggs back out of it. But um, I expect soon they will start picking up. I think they usually pick up sometime in February. And they probably would start a little bit earlier for me. Uh, if the chicken coop had a little bit more light coming in, but the, the situation there is just not that at the moment. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I hear you on the processing and all that. That's a lot of work. And, yeah, baby chicks are definitely dirty, dusty little buggers. But uh, let me just put it back to you briefly for uh, comment, questions, etc. cetera. Uh, Devin, Devin, I'll even triple down on that whole dirty, dusty thing. Um, I, I do have, and I knew about the... Uh, the light issue with the chickens, so I, I do have a timer on the coop. Uh, last year, I ran power out to the coop and put in a timer with a light switch and whatnot. So the lights come on about 5 a.m. Uh, it shuts off. I think I got it set for 4 p.m. right now. So and then uh, the natural uh, sunlight subsides. So I believe they are getting a decent amount of light. Uh, not as much as they would in the summer, definitely. The other thing we're going to get to be is that uh, a lot of the hens are just old. You know, they're, they're past yeah, their prime. They do lay off I think well. the bears issue I had this summer ate most of my young birds. <laughs> Yeah, I, I used to run uh, supplemental lighting in my coop over the winter, and I had one year where I had a hen that uh, didn't finish molting, and uh, she ended up uh, she ended up uh, losing all her feathers. And then I brought her in under a heat lamp for a while, and then I put her back out in the coop with the heat lamp over, her, and she ended up dying on me, and it felt bad. And I, the more I thought about it, the more I was like, man, I'm really taking them way out of their natural life cycle. Uh, so I just kind of decided that it's, it's okay to let them have a rest over the winter, and I, th I think that's a good approach to go with. Um, but uh, I hear you on the supplemental lighting. <laughs> it doesn't take a whole lot to uh, to do it. But anyway, uh, let's roll on down the list here to KD2B, uh, KD2BJT, Andy. <coughs> this is KD2BJT. Um, yeah, uh, sounds like a lot of bounce from here. Um, I didn't know about the, uh, the artificial lighting uh, thing at all. I thought they just, you know, let naturally uh, run under the sun and uh, and they would just uh, be as productive as, as it is. I guess uh, that this is probably, um, I'm guessing how that that's the, the amount of uh, sunlight that a chicken receive is correlated to, uh, like, you know, the size of the egg, uh, you know, like how they how they classify them as mid-sized jumbo, big, and et cetera, et cetera, and stuff like that. Uh, if anyone can enlighten me here, that would be really appreciated. <laughs> Uh, not not growing up in a farm, um, and uh, yeah, uh, regarding uh, uh, raspberry pie, I was yeah, really, that's really that's really impressive. Um, a small um, raspberry pie, how capable it is to uh, uh, to control, to monitor, and sort of even create a kind of a feedback loop uh, to essentially maintain the ecosystem in a greenhouse. Um, I, I I heard usually. Um, People do it with um, uh, with dedicated hardware, like I don't know, maybe Google Nest. I know uh, it's been using for uh, for for temperature control. It, it's a thermal stash used uh, and, uh, and in houses, but uh, I, I've heard also people uh, uh, mod it to uh, for for uh, greenhouses as well. Uh, but you know, uh, with a little with a little bit of knowledge, you can definitely do it with raspberry pi as you did. Uh, so, uh, very impressive, very impressive. Uh, yeah. Back to you, uh, Net Control. If I get it right, KD2 IIN. Uh, this is KD2 BJT. And this 
is KD2IIN Net Control with the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. Uh, let's see, I guess we'll start with the chickens and egg size. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the the number of, uh, well, okay, so we'll start with this. Uh, so uh, chickens lay an, one egg a day per hen, so uh, that's kind of the baseline. And then uh, based on light cycle, if they have more than 14 hours of light striking their retina, and that triggers their hormonal system uh, through their brain, uh, if they have more than 14 hours a day of light, they tend to lay. Uh, below that, they tend to stop laying eggs. And then egg size goes back to a couple of things, mostly breed related. So in other words, the strain of bird that you have, and then secondarily to that nutrition. You know, if, they're, uh, if they don't have as much nutrition, they'll tend to lay a bit smaller eggs. But uh, it's mostly uh, breed that has to do with that. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks on the greenhouse controller. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun and a good learning journey. And uh, I just got a, uh, my friend Aaron gave me a Raspberry Pi compute module board with a wave uh, board for it uh, for Christmas. And so uh, I'm gonna be developing the next level of that infrastructure um, uh, using that and sort of a, uh, a test and development environment uh, because the greenhouse control uh, the pie in the greenhouse is pretty uh, critical as far as keeping those temperatures uh, regulated and all um, there was something else I was going to say about that but I forget what it was but uh, yeah um, well I'm glad you uh, glad you found this interesting uh, let's roll on down to Jim K2BHM and then we'll do another opportunity for check-ins Jim pick it up thanks EJ um, yeah very interesting I didn't know that uh chickens were uh, so dependent on the environment uh, uh, for whether they're going to lay eggs or not or whatever. Uh, never thought about it, but now that you mention it, it uh, uh, makes perfect sense. So, okay. <laughs> Learned something tonight. Um, anyhow, not much else to uh, uh, come in on. I didn't want to turn this into a uh, raspberry pie net and hijack your uh, uh, topic. So, um, I'm going to back on out and just uh, keep on listening unless somebody's got a direct question. Alright, sounds good, Jim. And, uh, yeah, you know, I'm always game for some silicon for dessert. I love a good raspberry pie conversation. Um, anyway, let's uh, see if there's any further check-ins and then we'll roll back through the list. This is KD2IIN Net Control for the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. If there's any further check-ins, please call now. <laughs> All right, no further check-ins recognized at this time. And also, I wanted to mention, Andy, uh, this uh, this radio net, uh, this Sunday Night All Things Natural net, is actually streamed live on my YouTube channel. Uh, so if you're interested in checking out uh, previous nets and stuff, you can always do that. It's uh, The Pharmacy Seeds Network. Uh, that's F-A-R-M-A-C-Y, as in let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. So you can always go back and check those out. And uh, a lot of my raspberry pie-related stuff and greenhouse-related stuff is on that channel as well. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, you might you might uh, might enjoy checking it out. Uh, anyway, let's roll back up to Bob KD2 RFI. This is KD2 IIN Net Control for the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. Yes, that's right, Kirsten. Hey, uh, one other thing I want to add yes, on is well yeah, said, Kirsten. A little of my bear comment is uh, stress. Uh, chickens are greatly affected by stress too. Um, yep. Like right after my bear issues I had, I. Uh, Yeah. 
for the Sunday night, all things natural net. Uh, sounds like you got some big plans there, Bob, and uh, the garden and the trees and all those upgrades are definitely going to take some energy and time and effort. Uh, I hear you on the excavator thing. Uh, yeah, they're not cheap to rent, so you might as well uh, plan everything out real well and then just execute it when uh, when the time is right and you know knock it all out at once. Um, <coughs> what was I going to say? Um, something about something. Uh, I lost my train of thought on it, but uh, it sounds like an excellent, uh, excellent plan to upgrade. Oh, uh, yeah, I think uh, like uh, planning to grow all your own food is that's a really difficult thing to do. But if you can even grow like fifty to seventy percent of it, and, uh, and you know, and, and have uh, most of it coming from your own source, sources, that's awesome. Um, yeah, you know, I'll uh, I'll be around, and I'm more than happy to uh, you know uh, give you some tips and pointers as you get ready to implement the garden thing and. Uh, try and uh, you know help you out along those lines and you know you can always give me an email if you have a question and uh, you know before a net or between a net or uh, or we could even Skype and, uh, and chat if you have uh, you know, more in-depth questions or something so don't be afraid to uh, tap me and ask for help uh, it sounds like you're expanding the apiary this year uh, how uh, much bigger are you planning to go with that before we roll on down the list here some infrastructure upgrades there and that balance is always the real trick about any kind of farming operation if you're not full-time farming and even if you are <laughs> um, we should talk a little bit more uh, off air about some of those pieces and upgrades you're planning to do uh, I have some uh, big changes coming here on this farm here and uh, I might be able to help you out with a few of those things uh, I don't want to talk too much about that on the radio at the moment though so uh, let's roll on down the list to Katie 2 BJT Andy Uh, repeater is, is connected to emergency power. Um, I've seen 
that on the repeater above that it has yep. dash power on it, and I'm assuming that's uh, that's what is. Uh, okay, have a good night, Owen. Power when Thanks the, for coming uh, in. When the, the, the uh, electric electricity grid goes out of power, it's supposed to keep running for a couple hours or days. Um, this is what I'm the most curious. Um, uh, since uh, I think most repeaters are at like maybe like 100, 100 watts, maybe some, sometimes even they even go up to 200 watts, <coughs> and for that to uh, keep you know keep running for you know even a day or two after a disaster happens. Um, you know um, how 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 big of a battery does it need, and uh, nice. and uh, yeah, and, and 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 how long you know does it generally need to charge until it you know stabilizes and all of that? Just very very curious. Um, you know, some someone with uh, absolutely no uh, solar experience at all um, would be curious to know how uh, how 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 usually these uh, emergency powers can last. Um, I guess not just for repeaters and also for uh, uh, I guess for for for, uh, for home use. Um, yeah. Back to you, net control. Over. All right. Very good. Well, those are uh, good questions. Um, I can tell you about this repeater. This repeater puts out about 75 watts. Uh, and it goes through what are called tuning cans. I don't know how familiar you are with how repeaters work, but uh, going through those tuning cans prevents uh, crosstalk between the input and output frequency. And in doing that, you do lose some power. So actual output of the repeater, I think, runs around 50 or 55 watts, if I, uh, my memory serves me correctly. Uh, this repeater that we're on here is on a commercial, uh, a commercial uh, radio site. So we do have backup power, uh, we have big generators, big fuel tanks, and this machine virtually never goes down. We'll throw a little knock on wood in there. Uh, but yeah, overall this one is very reliable even through power outages. Um, your point is valid about um, you know uh, running on solar power or battery backups. Uh, that sort of thing can work, but all, you know it comes back to how much repeater usage you have and all. And then you have to design a solar and power and battery system that can support that. Um, my greenhouse, uh, uh, you know, has been sort of a backup power source for me during a couple of storm outages we had. We had one a uh, few years back where we were out for three or four days, and uh, you know, I was able to go out there and recharge my headlight batteries and uh, recharge my radio, my handheld radio, and that kind of stuff. Uh, it's not a tremendous power system, but it was it was able to supply basic power through that power outage. Um, but I hope that answers your questions. Uh, I'll put it back to you briefly to make sure we answer your questions or address your uh, curiosities. Oh yeah, it does. It totally does. Um, uh, I think uh, one one thing that I'm really uh, interested in is the, sure, uh, is, uh, the, uh, the conversion, the voltage, the voltage difference. Um, yeah, I think for, uh, for for radios, and I think they can typically work under um, you know maybe 12 volts. Uh, you know. Uh, Something that's uh, 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 generatable. I don't know if that's a word uh, by solar by solar system. But uh, I guess for uh, for home use, um, it's not. You know, it sounds to me that um, to to generate uh, 120 volts, it's really not that efficient. Um, so uh, just curious how, how if your greenhouse uh, if your if your greenhouse also uses 110 volts, or it's more like um, uh, 12 volts, like um, like vehicle battery, that kind of stuff, because that should be just enough for basic use. If you want to charge your handheld or your phone, um, stuff like that. Yeah, over. All right, very good. This is KD2 uh, uh, and Control of the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. Yeah, my greenhouse uses a 12 volt system. I have a 100 watt and a 25 watt solar panel on it, and that charges a 12 volt deep cycle battery. Uh, I tend to like to run things on 12 volts because it's, uh, it's such a common voltage for DC powered things. Uh, I do have an inverter in there. It's actually an uninter uninterruptible power supply that I hacked uh, the output side of it to, to make it so I could use it as an inverter. That, uh, that'll produce about 500 watts, but it won't do it very long on that deep cycle battery. I think the deep cycle battery is like a 40 amp hour deep cycle. So uh, it's not a huge amount of backup power, but it will run the Raspberry Pi by itself for a couple of days, you know, in case we don't get uh, any solar power. Um, 
but uh, there is there are inverters and power you know uh, solar systems and battery technologies that are emerging that are much more efficient than what there used to be. Some of those inverters now, I think they have micro inverters that'll run like uh, I don't know ninety five percent or greater efficiency. So that technology has evolved in a positive way. Um, but you know it's funny you bring that up because I know Jim here on the net uh, is very familiar with that stuff. So maybe we'll just roll on down to Jim and let him uh, throw in his two cents on it. This is KD2 uh, in that control. We're gonna roll down to K2 BHM. Jim. Yeah, okay. K2 BHM. Yeah, there's lots of technology out there, lots of different methods. Um, old technology was you put a bunch of solar cells up on top of the house and uh, generate about four or five, six hundred volts into a uh, nice hypnosis. converter nice. and convert it back to uh, house power. Um, yeah, big don't money. Don't really use much sure of that anymore. They go with uh, micro inverters. Uh, they break the panels up into 12 or 24 volt sections and run the series of inverters. That way, if uh, you lose the panel or an inverter, you don't lose all the system. And they've gone synchronous now so that uh, uh, you don't have batteries. Uh, you basically supplement the uh, AC utility. But uh, if you do uh, lose the utility, um, they usually shut themselves down. Uh, some of them now will isolate and provide you power, but then when it gets dark out, um, you, got nothing. you don't get anything. Um, but there's all kinds of options out there now. The, the whole technology has exploded, so it's basically pretty much whatever you want to do and how much money you want to throw at it. Yeah. K2BHM. Well said, Jim. Well said. Yeah, it uh, always comes back to follow the money and how much can you throw at it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there are some uh, some nice new technologies out there. All right, let's take a pause here and see if there's any last minute check-ins for the net. This is KD2 IIN Net Control for the Sunday Night All Things National Net. If any further check-ins, please call now. All right, no further check-ins recognized at this time. We'll roll back to the top list to KD2 RFI. Hey, KD2 RFI. Um, yeah, I, mean, I got a whole lot of questions regarding the technology aspect of it, but I'm, I'm definitely trying to stay on topic a little. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I definitely, CJ, I'm definitely going to reach out to you. Uh, together seamlessly for you because uh, you've put in a lot of years doing that and, uh, 
it'd probably be nice to just uh, go back and be closer to nature and all. And uh, yeah, it's uh, that's a well said on uh, trees and how they replace themselves and all that. Uh, yeah, it's, that's nature's like perspective is like produce a ton of abundance and let the really strong survive and really take off. So uh, uh, glad you'll be reaching out about that. Uh, I'm sure we have lots to talk about that. And, uh, I'll definitely be able to, be able to uh, share with you and I'm sure we can link up on some other stuff as well so uh, awesome glad to hear it and I'm probably it's probably slipping my mind some of the stuff you said but uh, I'm gonna roll on down the list here because uh, my train of thought has been derailed again uh, let's roll on down to kd 2 bjt is evolving quickly I would say you're almost better off to pick up a, a decent used mobile radio um, if you're not going to go full scale forward because the emerging technology is DMR or digital mobile radio and uh, I think the mobile versions of those are still fairly expensive uh, they're super flexible I don't know how much you know about it but uh, they're able to operate uh, through repeaters and also through the internet uh, through sort of a hybrid over the internet um, so there's a lot of uh, like new technology that's coming out. But I would say if you're going to buy a new radio, I would say uh, anything in uh, Kenwood, um, Kenwood Icom, or uh, Yesu uh, would be the ones to go with. They make really high quality equipment. Uh, that said, uh, most of those mobile radios are going to be fairly expensive. Um, so you might be better off to uh, to look into something that's um, uh, used and uh, reliable and of decent quality you can get quite a price knockoff to do that I know I don't know what the club has available at the moment but I know our amateur radio club actually has a list of stuff that's for sale uh, I think those prices are pretty fair on those so you might contact Dave uh, K2JLV for that if you want I can give you an email address for that uh, I'll put it back to you momentarily <laughs> I think he does have QRZ, but I'm not entirely sure of that. If you want, I have an email address I can give you right over the air. Sounds good. Go ahead. All right. It's his call sign, K2JLV at ARRL.net. Roger. All right, very good. Contact him, and uh, um, you know, if he doesn't, uh, if there's not something on the club list, he might know someone else who's looking to sell a radio, and uh, 
you know, uh, the hams are usually pretty good people, so you can, you know, they'll tell you if there's a problem or, uh, you know, they're, they're fair, decent people, I find, for the most part. So uh, contact him, and I'm sure he can uh, guide you in a, in a good direction. And uh, maybe uh, I'm sure he can provide you a little more information regarding uh, emerging technology with the DMR and all that kind of other stuff. Uh, anyway, let's roll on down the list to K2 BHM. Thanks, EJ. <laughs> yeah, that's a big can of worms. What radio do I buy? Uh, it's uh, as bad as saying, uh, what camera's going to take the best pictures? Yeah. Or uh, what car should I buy or whatever? There's so many variables, and it depends on uh, your nice level of experience it. and... Uh, um, what you want to do with it and so forth and so on. So, um, it's yeah. basically it's a, a good place topic. to start uh, <laughs> looking around and um, seeing what other people use and uh, trying to find what you're looking for to suit your needs. And then go from there. Well said, Jim. Well said. All right, well, we're uh, getting uh, low on time here, so we're going to go back through and do uh, a final round here, and then we'll uh, go ahead and wrap the net up for the evening. So uh, this is KD2 IIN Control for the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net. We're going to roll back to the top of the list to Bob, KD2 RFI. Your final comments for the net. Ah, final comments is, boy, I miss the days of Ford versus Chevy when there's <laughs> only two to compare. <laughs> you ask them how to radio, oh. It just goes and goes and goes. But anyway, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, I'll be reaching out to you uh, soon, CJ. And, uh, you know, maybe about the only thing I have to trade for your knowledge right at this point is uh, maybe a little bit of honey and uh, get to play with a power saw, I guess. A big old power saw with three foot bar. That's about all I can offer. But anyway, uh, I'll definitely reach out to you. Uh, everyone, take care. Have a good night. Uh, congratulations, Katie, to BJT on uh, getting his license. Uh, don't stop here. Keep on going. Keep on studying, and uh, you'll find it's a wide open world. Uh, so it's a lot to learn. Lot to learn. Never stop learning. Always keep driving. All right, Katie, two RFI. Wish everyone seven three. All right, very good, Bob. And yeah, uh, don't worry about. Uh, you don't have to give me anything for knowledge. I'm more than happy to share knowledge with you for free. Uh, <laughs> no worries on that. Um, but I, w I wouldn't mind playing with that uh, beast of the saw of yours at some point if we can link up. But uh, we'll have to see how our schedules work out. And all I know, we're both pretty busy. But uh, yeah, don't be afraid to reach out. I'll look forward to hearing from you, and we'll go from there. Uh, let's roll on down to KD2 BJT Andy. <laughs> Uh, thanks, Bob. Yeah, thanks for your kind words. I mean, yeah, this, uh, it's a lot to learn, you know, the exam hey, is big the, uh, the beginning of things. And, What's going uh, on, dude? You know, Good to see you. That I'm still a technician to start with, you know. There's two more levels, you know. Now that I already have the license, it just only makes sense to go even higher, going all the way to the end. So, got tons to learn and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice, Kiki. I mean, not just the, the knowledge, you know, um, things on the exam, which is there for memorization. Uh, Always lurking, uh, big one. And, and uh, memorizing things in the exam, so um, put it that way. Um, yeah, I uh, really appreciate this. Uh, you know, be, appreciate this this conversation here. Uh, you know, having me here as well. Um, I know um, <laughs> I won't be in this area, uh, 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 you know, for too long. But uh, when I'm back, um, you know, I try to come. I'll try to come back more often and uh, and, and rejoin the net as well. As this, um, very fun conversation, and actually, this is my first time, you know, joining the net. So uh, today, I learned a lot of things, really. Um, and, uh, yeah, thank you for uh, for being very, uh, you know, I guess, I guess, being very welcoming to me as well. Uh, yeah, back to you. Uh, this is KD Two BJT. K 
KD2IIN at Control. Uh, well, Andy, it's a real pleasure to have met you. I'm glad you got uh, licensed. I want to say congratulations on that again. I'm glad you found a repeater in our club. We have a really awesome group of people here in an excellent community. And I hope when you're back in the area, you will uh, come visit us, whether it's on the net or just uh, say hi on the repeater. Um, you can always follow up and uh, check out, uh, con you know, make contact with our club members through the OMARC, uh, OMARC website, which I'll throw out here in a moment. And uh, I look forward to hearing from you again in the future, and uh, it's been a real pleasure to have you aboard with us. So with that, we'll roll on down to K2, BHM. Jim, your final comments for the net. Thanks, Thanks Big Ryan. Uh, just wanted to say uh, welcome to Andy, and congratulations on your ticket. And uh, uh, there are so many different avenues to go down for video imagery. You just scratched the surface. Um, so true. You might get into digital, you might get into HF, uh, 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 slow scan TV. Uh, there's, there's just so many different things that people are into that uh, you get bored with one thing, there's a dozen others to go to. So, And uh, as far as tonight's net is concerned, uh, it's not very typical of our nets. You never know where it's going to go and what comments are going to come back and forth and a lot of technical stuff flying in. And uh, they're very interesting and very enjoyable. Uh, and CJ is going to do the closing monologue, and he'll fill you in on the other nets that are available. So, welcome, K2BHM. Uh, thanks, Jim. I always appreciate your participation, your kind words, your insight, and your engineering mind. All right, well, that's, uh, that's it for the net, so let me just do some announcements here before we wrap the ribbons on. So every day at 8.35 a.m. and 6.30 p.m., the Overlook Mount Amateur Radio Club here on this repeater, 146.805 megahertz, runs the Omark Daily Check-In Net, sort of a community check-in net, uh, uh, sort of more family-oriented and just a daily check-in kind of thing. Uh, Thursday nights at 8 p.m., Dave, K2JLV, runs the Thursday night net. That's more oriented along uh, technology, amateur radio, HF radio, antenna design, Raspberry Pi, and all sorts of other awesome technical topics that always has excellent participation and a whole bunch of minds. It's sort of like the hive mind, so I hope you'll check that out as well. And then, of course, tonight, if you were here or listening, you've been part of the Sunday Night All Things Natural Net, hosted by yours truly, KD2IIM. A little bit more about our club. If you want to know more about our club or look up our nets or find out any other information about our club, you can always go to www.omarkclub.org. That's whiskey, whiskey, whiskey. Oscar, Mike, Alpha, Romeo, Charlie, Charlie, Lima, Uniform, Bravo. Oscar, Romeo, Golf. Uh, with that, uh, seven threes. Thanks to all who, those who participated. We'll return this frequency to regular amateur use. This has been a session of the Sunday Night All Things Natural Night. Seven threes, everyone. Thanks for your participation. Have a great evening and a great week. Kitty two, I, I and I will be clear. Ah, uh, thank you, Geeky. Yes. Uh, check out Paranormal Portal if you're watching here on uh, YouTube channel. Seventy three to all of you. Uh, a really great evening here. Um, well, I hope to come here more. Thank you, often Geeky, for possible. sharing the link. Awesome, nice to get a new ham in. Uh, yeah, so I don't know, you guys know the deal. Go check out Paranormal Portal uh, if you haven't. And uh, thanks to everyone who listened, watched, participated, chatted. And thanks for supporting the Pharmacy Seas Network. Hope you all have a great evening, a great week. And we'll see you Tuesday night or Wednesday for Comrades in Farms if you uh, feel so inclined. I hope you all have a great evening. Thanks so much for watching the Pharmacy Seas Network.